Okay, you probably know that this is a perfect fourth. This is a major third. And this is a minor third. But what would you call this interval? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about all of the intervals we have in the quarter tone system, both familiar and alien. To start off with, let's just say that all of the intervals that you're used to from 12 tone equal temperament are still here and they work exactly the same as you'd expect. You can still have a major third or a perfect fifth and nobody's going to mind. And you can even start them on quarter tone notes. For example, we can go a major third up from a C half sharp and wind up at E half sharp. Similarly, we can go, for example, a perfect fifth down from E half sharp to get to A half sharp. But we also have access to a lot of really new and exciting intervals. Take, for example, neutral intervals. These sit halfway between a major and a minor interval. For example, right between a major third and a minor third, we now have a neutral third, which you can think of as being a quarter tone flat from a major third. We can do the same thing with a sixth, for example, in between a major sixth and a minor sixth, we have a neutral sixth. Beyond that, we can also create intervals by kind of extending beyond familiar intervals. If we take a major interval and make it one quarter tone sharp, we'll get a super major interval. For example, from C to E half sharp is called a super major third. By contrast, from C to E three halves flat is called a subminor third. So what I want to do now is just kind of walk you through all of the intervals in 24 tet, both familiar and fresh, so that you can get a feel for what they all sound like and what they're all called. We have the unison, but that's not really an interval. So the first smallest interval we have is the super minor second. Although most people are probably just going to call that a quarter tone or a quarter step. We have our minor second or semitone, which should sound fairly familiar. And one step above that, we have our neutral second. The major second should sound familiar enough. And above that, we have what you could either call the super major second, or if you prefer, the sub minor third. Then we've got our minor third, as you would expect, and in between that and the major third, we have the neutral third. Here's the major third for contrast. The super major third, to me, sounds a lot more like a flattened perfect fourth. And if we raise the perfect fourth by one quarter tone, that actually is now called a major fourth. Above that, we have our ordinary tritone. And then this interval, that I guess you could probably call the subminor fifth. The perfect fifth is where you would expect. And a quarter tone above that, I'm just going to call the subminor sixth because I think it's the clearest. The minor sixth is familiar, then we have the neutral sixth before the major sixth. Beyond that, we have the subminor seventh. This is a decent approximation for what's also called the harmonic seventh, um, but there are other temperaments that approximate that a little better than this one. It's still kind of rough here. Then we've got our ordinary minor seventh, our neutral seventh, major seventh, super major seventh, and then we're back up to an octave. Now that we have all of these new intervals, our next step is going to be to combine them into chords. So next episode, the fun really begins as we build a whole new slew of chords. See you then, and stay tuned.